Good evening. Good to see everyone. Hope you're having a good week. If you will stand with me together, we're going to sing Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. In a minute. <laughs> It's good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. We do have a few announcements for you. First of all, don't forget uh, that on the 5th of this month, we're going to honor our graduates. What we're going to do on Sunday is we're going to put the names up on the board uh, on the sign that we know that have already given us their names that are graduating. And if you see a name uh, that should be on there that is graduating, you need to let Kathy know and then we're going to get everything done, and then on the 5th, we're going to honor our graduates. That'll be on the 11 o'clock service, so be here for that. Our Bible school is going to start on the 17th of July. That'll go through the 21st, so you need to let Debbie Shelton or Terry know if you can help in Bible school, and I'm sure they need all of it. They can get all the help, so uh, please uh, let them know. Uh, this Sunday night is our fifth Sunday night scene, right? Fifth Sunday night sing this Sunday night, so uh, you make sure you're here for that. That'll be fun. We always have a good time on our fifth Sunday night sing. Um, the 26th of June, the Ladies of Grace are going to sponsor a cookout after church to raise funds for our playground. We need to get some uh, new playground equipment and also uh, for their obligations, their projects that they're doing. So. They are going to have a hamburger hot dog uh, cookout with all the fixings after um, the 26th that Sunday night. So make plans on being, being there for that. That'll be fun. Uh, the seniors are going to go to Brian and Ann Burton's on the 18th. So if you would, uh, there is a sign-up sheet in the back. Please sign up so we'll know how many is coming and how much food and different things to get. Uh, there are some prayer requests uh, you need to remember. Uh, Kay Foster is still in intensive care. They did do uh, open heart surgery, and they did four bypasses, and uh, she is having a few complications from that. Uh, so uh, don't forget to be uh, fluid around her heart and different things. Um, they're having to give her some blood and different things. So uh, I talked to Dan on my way to church, and he said to please remember Kay in your prayers and ask the Lord to touch her. Also, uh, Dean Ford is in the hospital. Uh, he is in the medical center. He has um, 
uh, kidney stones and uh, he has pneumonia and just different things and uh, I was up there yesterday and seen him and he was feeling a little better yesterday but today he's not feeling good at all so remember uh, Dean uh, in your prayers is there anybody else you'd like to mention tonight uh, that's sick that we can pray for yes okay remember Amy anybody else yes Yes. Yes. Pray for me tonight. I got a kidney stone. And me and uh, TJ may tag team here in a minute if I don't feel good. So he's ready to preach too. I don't know if he can preach what I'm preaching, but he's got something. I called him this afternoon about 2 o'clock, and I said, uh, I don't know. And then about 3, 4 o'clock, I felt some better. So hopefully I'll get through tonight. If not, TJ can finish up. Yes, yes. That's good. Anybody else? Yes, I'm sure there's many unspokens. Amen. All right, this time I'm going to have our ushers to come on down, and we're going to take up our Wednesday night offering. Of course, everything we take up tonight 
we'll go to um, we'll go to uh, our kids. So you give tonight. Troy, take us to the Lord. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 6. And uh, we're going to look there in verses 7 and 8. And then I'm going to read a couple more uh, little parts of verses to show you where we're going. Let's all stand in Genesis, chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And then down in verse 13 it says, And God said to Noah, and then in verse 14 it says, Make thee an ark. So he told him what he was going to do. And then he said, I want you to make an ark. And as I told you last week, that was a strange request from the Lord. Because they knew nothing about floods, about water, about any of this. And God told him to do it. And by the way, he did it. Because God told him to. We ought to take something from that. Amen. We ought to do what God tells us to do. Let's thank the Lord for the reading of his word tonight. Father, we love you. We thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for allowing us to be in your house tonight. Father, well, sometimes, uh, you know, I think people take it for granted that we have church on Wednesday night, and we have church on Sunday morning and Sunday night. And, Father, they just don't come. And I pray tonight, Father, that you will touch the heart of those people. Let them know how important it is to be at church and to hear your word and to worship and to do the things we're supposed to do. And, Father, I just pray tonight you'll bless the preaching of your word. Give us wisdom. Father, use me as your vessel tonight. Preach through me the very words 
that you would have us to hear teach tonight, Father, the things that you would want us to learn. And we'll praise you forevermore for what you do because you're a good God. In your precious sweet name we pray these things in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Tell somebody you love them before you sit down tonight. I'd like to thank the Lord for being here tonight and all of his many blessings, you know. He has been so good to me, and I don't deserve it. I don't, I don't deserve any of his love and graciousness, but I thank God that he loves me, and he saved me, and I, one day I get to go to heaven to see him. Once again I face Satan this morning, and I battle him all the Well, you know, last week we talked on this passage of Scripture from uh, this series that we've been doing, the Genesis Factor, and we talked about the coming flood. And we talked of how that, you know, there's parallels uh, between what God told Noah and what, you know, is going to happen on our, I believe, in our lifetime. I, I believe that. Now, it may not, but I believe that. I think there's a parallel there. I think the Lord shows us that he's going to come and get us one day and that we ought to be ready. How many believe that? We ought to be ready. We ought to be ready and waiting for the coming of the Lord. We talked about the reasons for the flood. What were the reasons? Well, the first reason that we talked about was the sin of intermarriage, of believers and unbelievers. And God tells us, you know, in Genesis uh, chapter 6, verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, uh, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And we talked about that a little bit last week. The second reason we talked about for judgment was the mocking of God's word and the preacher of God. 
And uh, folks, I don't know about you, but we have that in our day and time also. Uh, the mocking of God's word and the preacher of God. They, they don't believe uh, the word of God anymore. Uh, they don't believe what the preachers preach. They don't give, uh, you know, the word of God any thought. And that's exactly where they were then, and that's exactly where we're at now. But we talked about thirdly last week that there is hope in this ark. And uh, Genesis 6, 8 says, Noah found grace. How many of you know tonight that we live under grace? And I thank the Lord for that, don't you? I thank that His grace, and I thank Him all the time for His grace uh, upon my life. Because if it wasn't for His grace, folks, where would we be at tonight? So I thank Him for His grace. Well, tonight, I want you to look with me just for a moment. And we're going to talk about what we believe is going to happen in our day and time. And we're going to parallel it to, uh, you know, Noah and his time. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44, the words there tell us this. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women uh, shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. In saying all that, you know, I, I like to watch a, a lot of, uh, I don't watch a lot of it, but every now and then I watch, you know, a lot of murder mystery things, you know, and I don't know about you, but, you know, there's times that uh, people commit these murders and they never find the body. They never know, you know, where the body is. They just have speculation that it's these people. Well, uh, there's sometimes, and, and I've watched these, where whole families disappear. And they don't know where they're at, you know, but they, they may have someone that's a suspect on them, but they, they, they never have found them. Uh, uh, they don't know where they're at. They just vanished. And, and I remember one of these murder mysteries I was watching, and the police chief said these words. He said, he said there's a shock factor here, talking about a whole family, you know, disappearing. He said, it's the disappearance of the whole family, and we don't know where they're at. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight that one day this old world's going to wake to the news that a whole family's missing. And it's going to be the family of God, amen? And it's going to be millions upon millions of us that are saved that are going to go missing. They're not going to know where we're at or not understand where we're at. Well, uh, here it's possible that during that time, you know, when the rapture of the church happens, and we do believe in the rapture of the church, amen? We believe God's going to come and get his church. Uh, we believe that also that there may be headlines during that time that say multitudes. I mean, I can almost see the headlines on top of the paper. Multitudes have vanished. Where are they? Folks, we won't care about what they think, will we? Because we're going to be in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's going to happen one day. You see, one of these days, and I can only imagine the shock factor, uh, that one of these days, multitudes upon multitudes of people are going to be taken from this earth. You know, we preach about it and we teach about it. And I think sometimes, you know, that, that we'll sit under preaching like you're going to hear tonight and we'll think to ourselves, well, I've heard that all my life, but I'm here to tell you that one of these days it's going to happen. Amen. What you've heard all your life is going to come true. And uh, we're going to go home to be with Jesus. Amen. 
And uh, one of these days, millions upon millions of people are going to just vanish off the face of this earth. You know, I've always thought, and, and I may be wrong, but I've always thought that I, I might be part of the rapture. You know, even when I was a, a, a young preacher, I always thought when I was preaching messages like this, you know, that I, I think I'm going to be part of the rapture. And you know what, folks? The, the longer I live, the more I believe that. Because the way this old world is. You know, one of these days, all kinds of people, all kinds of classes of people and creeds and colors are going to suddenly vanish from off of this earth. The way the Bible tells it, you know, they'll be, they'll be sitting, they'll be standing, they'll be sleeping, they'll be walking and talking in one moment, and the next moment, they'll disappear off this earth forevermore. How many believe that tonight? That's what the Bible says, I believe it. And you know what? People are going to search for them. They'll search for their loved ones. They'll, they'll search for their friends. That reminds us in Genesis, you remember there in Genesis chapter 5, we talked about this missing person. If you remember, I'm going to read it to you in Genesis 5, 24. And it says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not for what? God took him. That's the first time in the Bible that we see, uh, you know, this foreshadowing uh, of the rapture of the church. And the Bible says about Enoch in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, it talks about him there. And it says in that scripture that he was not found. In other words, he vanished off the face of the earth. And then he was not found. Well, that goes to show us that people were looking for him. Amen? And the same thing's going to happen one of these days when the trump of God sounds and the dead in Christ is going to rise first and then we that are alive and remain shall be... Boy, y'all know your Bible, don't you? Does that make you excited? Called up to be with Jesus. And people's going to search for us. They're going to look for us. They're going to say, where have they gone? It's going to be such a shock, and this place is going to be in such a panic. How many believe that? I mean, it's just going to be a panic. I can almost see uh, CNN and, and Fox News, you know, all these live coverage, you know, breaking news, breaking news, and this one's gone over here, and this one's gone over there. And they're going to be interviewing people out on the street. Well, where do you think your loved one's gone? I don't know, but I wish I could find them. And then they'll interview somebody, they'll say, I know exactly where they're going. Because my mama and daddy told me all my life about the rapture of the church. And they'll cut real quick off of them, because they don't want to hear that. They'll still be just like they are now, amen? They won't care anything about God, and they won't care anything about uh, Christians. They'll be glad we're gone, all those people that don't love God. They want to hear anything about they vanished because God has come to get them. It'll be a shock to all those people here on this world, in this world. And they'll search for their loved ones, but to no avail. But you know, to us, as Christians, it's going to be a celebration. Hey, we've never seen a celebration like it's going to be when Jesus comes to get us, folks. We can only imagine what it's going to be when we get in heaven with God. I know I've preached a lot of funerals, you know, over my lifetime, and I've talked about heaven over my lifetime of preaching. I've, I've talked about it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. But, folks, it doesn't matter how many times I talk about it or how many times I imagine it. It's going to be better than anything I've ever talked about, and it's going to be better than anything I've ever imagined in my life. <laughs> you see, it's going to be a time of celebration for those of us that are saved, but those uh, left on this earth, it's going to be a tragic event. I want to ask you tonight, are you going to be among the missing? Did you get that? Are you going to be among the missing? Now I want you to go beyond that. I want you to think right now. Do you know somebody that's not going to be among the missing? And I don't, need, I don't mean to bring it down to this, but folks, we need to bring it down to this. That not everybody you know is going to go to heaven. 
Not everybody you know is going to be caught out, is going to be raptured with the church. Not everybody you know. There's sons, there's daughters, there's uncles, there's aunts, there's, there's cousins, there's, there's best friends, there's people you work with, there's people you know right now that if Jesus came, they wouldn't go. Now I want you to think about that just for a moment. Because folks, we've had all these years that we've been Christians. And all these, all this time that we've been saved to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. And some of us, and I'm including myself in this, some of us haven't told people that God wanted us to tell. And we're comfortable where we're at. We're comfortable until that trump of God sounds and we're out of here and they're left. If you believe that tonight, you know I'm telling you the truth. You know what I'm getting ready to preach on is the truth. The first thing I want to talk about tonight, and I probably won't get through all of it, but the first thing I want to talk about is information that's concealed. There's information that God conceals about His coming. The first thing is the secrecy of His coming. I want you to look there in Matthew 24, verse 36, where it says there, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. That goes to show us right there that nobody knows when He's coming. And all these people that get on TV and all these people that write books and all these people that try to tell us this is the date, this is the hour, this is when he's coming. Listen to me, folks. Don't believe them because the Bible says no man knoweth. I told you this story a while back. Uh, but in um, 1988, my father died in 1989. But in 1988, there was a book came out. Some of you may, most of you are old enough to remember this. There was a book that came out, and it was entitled 88 Reasons That the Lord is Coming in 1988. Anybody remember that? I got a copy, too, in my library. I do. 88 Reasons. And, and you know, this guy had <laughs> 88 reasons <laughs> why the Lord was going to come back. And you know what? A lot of people took that to heart and believed that. Folks, listen to me. Look at me. Some of those people, if you remember, some of those people had their animals put to sleep. Honestly, had their dogs put to sleep, their cats put to sleep. They, they went into debt. They, I'm telling you the truth. And that day come in 1988, and all they got out of that was their poor old animals were put to sleep. And they went in debt. You want to know why? Because the Bible says, read that with me again. Let's read that verse again. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, But of that day... An hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my. Why don't we believe the word? But as we're talking about this secrecy of his coming, in the day and time that we live in, there's much to suggest because of the word of God that, that he's coming very soon, Right? There's, there's a lot to suggest that he's coming uh, uh, very soon. There's indicators. And God said they would be indica indicators in the last days. Is that not what he said? He said, I'll give you indicators that will show you that, that, that I'm coming, but it's impossible for any person to set a date and a time that Jesus Christ is coming. We cannot say tonight with certainty what, what is next, you know, on the political front. I mean, this political, it's a mess, isn't it? I mean, this whole country, we're in a mess. I, I, you know, I, I'm 54 years old. I've never seen it like it is. And I know, you know, some of you are a little older than me. And I, you notice I said a little older, a little older than me. That's politically correct, isn't it, to say things like that. 
a little older than me, that you've never seen it like this either. So for certainty, we can't really say, uh, you know, what the uh, next great event on the political front is. We know that there's a presidential election coming up. But we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt what will be the next great event on the prophetic uh, calendar because it's the fulfillment of the Word of God. We're looking tonight as Titus 2.13. I'm looking for that what? Blessed hope and that glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior. Who? Jesus Christ. That's what I'm looking for. And from all indicators and all the things that's happening in this world, I don't know the day, I don't know the hour, but I know he's coming soon. He's coming soon. So we're not able to know the exact hour of his coming. But I, can, I believe within my heart that we can know that it's drawing near, don't you? <laughs> Secondly, I, I want you to look here at the sureness of his coming. Verse 37 gives us that of Matthew 24. It says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What's Jesus saying there? Well, he's saying that, that the characteristics of the time uh, of the Lord's coming will be very similar to what happened in the days of Noah. Now, we know what happened in the days of Noah. We know the Cain... Cain and all the things, they, they served other gods, you know. Uh, there was all kinds of sexual impurities going on. There was all this stuff going on. We know that. And, and folks, we can honestly say tonight that that is the truth in our day and time. That we live in a time where there's all kinds of sexual impurity, there's wickedness, uh, there, there's homosexuality, same. I mean, we can connect the dots as the same that was happening during the times of the flood. We, we may even, you know, be escalating a little more than what it was then, uh, escalating because of, of things that we can watch and things, you know, that we can see and all these things. It might be escalating a little more. But Jesus said here that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. So, in other words, first of all, we can know that his coming is near because we have wickedness. We have all these things. But there's a second thing there, and, and, and I want you to understand that this, there's a, a certainty here that Jesus was also saying that, that as certain as the times were in Noah's days, so shall the certainty of his coming. In other words, because of what's happening now, that, that we can be certain if he destroyed the earth then because of what they were doing, that there's a certainty tonight that he's going to destroy this earth for what's going on now. Certainty. Because as one preacher used to say, you know, I've heard a lot of preachers say this, you know, if, if he don't come pretty soon, then he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Because of the certainty of the sin. You see, folks, sin always, listen to me, God will always have to do something about sin. Right? So when he says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be, not only uh, do we look at the characteristics, but we have to look at the certainties of the times that, 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 is, that it's bad now. I, I like what uh, M.R. Uh, Dehan said. I don't know if y'all, have you ever read M.R. Dehan? Have you? Uh, he's a great writer, an uh, older writer. But in his book on, the, on Revelation, he writes this. The strongest certainty in all the world is the coming again of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's sure than the sunrise. And although the sun has never failed to rise, he's coming again. Again. Amen. He's coming again. I, I like what the Bible says in John 14, 3. Uh, Jesus gives us a certainty about his coming. And here's what he says. He says, and if I go and pre prepare a place for you, I use this in a lot of funerals, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's a certainty. You, you can be certain about that. 
How many understand that tonight, amen? That's Jesus himself telling you and telling me that, that he's, he's gone. He said, if I go, which he's gone, and I'm going to prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again. It, it's a certainty. So not only is there characteristics, but there's a certainty about his coming. The third thing here in this point is the suddenness of his return. You see, in the days of Noah, men were living life as they pleased. They had no fear of God. They had no alarm uh, about what Noah was preaching to them. Uh, they didn't care a bit about what he was preaching to them. They, they, they went on their way. They did everything they had all, always done. But then there came a day that it began to rain. And folks, I'm here to tell you, there's going to come a day after we preached all these things, after I've preached all these years, and I've talked about the coming of the Son of Man, and I've talked about Jesus rapturing his church. I, I, I preached on all these things, and hundreds and thousands of preachers had. There's going to come a day that the trumpet's going to blow. As sure as you're breathing, the trumpet's going to blow. What's going to happen when that trumpet blows, preacher? We're out of here. That's the only way I can explain. How fast is that going to be, preacher? I don't know, but it's fast. Amen? You'll be gone quicker than I can snap my fingers. If you're saved. If you're saved. But, you know... They went on the, always as they had, you know, and, and, and then it began to, to, to rain. The flood, of, the flood of God's judgment came upon them. And their actions and their attitudes before the flood were no different. Have you noticed, now, have you noticed how the action and the attitudes of lost folks in our day and time is really a lot different than it was 20, 25 years ago. They're more wicked, folks. Hey, listen, they just don't believe. They, they hate the ones that do believe. I mean, Noah, he got to preach, didn't he? He preached. But in our day and time, they would like nothing more than to get rid of all preaching and all Christians. Well, guess what? One of these days, they're going to get rid of it. They're going to get rid of it. You see, they ignored, they spurned all the preaching of God's judgment upon them. Uh, they, they, they were unaware of uh, of the seriousness of it and unprepared for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you, when he returned, uh, when he started that flood, I'm here to tell you there was some to say, I'm sure while they were in that water, they said, I just didn't know. I just didn't know. I wish I'd have known. Listen, folks, let me tell you, in our day and time in the United States, there is no way that people don't know about Jesus. No way. Secondly tonight, the separation that, that is caused by the coming of the Lord. There's going to be a separation. This event will be a thrilling one for all of us, as I said, that are saved. But it's going to be so tragic. And I, I talked about millions that are saved. But folks, you know there are millions that are lost all over this world. And there's going to be so many millions of families that are going to have a tragic event that's going to happen in their life one day. One of these days, people are going to wake up and their husbands are going to be gone. And their wives are going to be gone. And their homes are going to be devastated because they're gone. And I know we talk about that a lot, and there's even been movies on that, you know, and Left Behind and all these things, but folks, it's truth. One of these days, Jesus is going to come back, and families are going to be torn apart because some of them are going to be saved, and some of them are going to be lost. God 
warns his children. He warns this world uh, about, about his, the removal of these people. He talks to us. He preaches and, and messages to us and, and through radio and TV and from churches all across America on every corner. He tells people that one of these days he's coming. Jesus described this about families being tore apart. He said that one day two were in the field and two grinding at the mill. And suddenly one of them was missing and one of them was left. That's what he said. And when he talks about grinding at the mill and being in the field, it was their day and time of, uh, of uh, putting into words how that they worked. You see, the women took care of the home, grinding the meal. They, they were getting the, the meal ready for the, for the cooking. And then the men were out in the field. That's what he said. That's the way he explained it. But during our day and time, it just means going about life. That people are just going to be going about life like you do every day, whatever you do every day. You're going to be going about your life. And if you're saved, one of these days, Jesus is going to come and you're going to be gone. And others are going to be left. That's what he says. He's going to cause a separation in families. He's going to cause a separation among friends. Those that are saved will be caught up to meet the Lord. And those that are unsaved will be left here on this earth. Secondly, out of this separation that is caused by his coming, I want you to notice the happiness uh, the removed ones, that's us that are saved, will enjoy. You and I that know the Lord Jesus Christ, and when we're raptured out of this earth, it's going to end all of our earthy, earthly trials, all of the stress, all of the pain, all of the health problems, all of these things we have in one moment, in one instant, is going to be gone. No more kidney stones. No more hospitals. Amen. No more death. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more heartache. No more money problems. Amen. No more poverty. No more sin. It's all going to be gone. We're going to live a life of eternal bliss. How many believe that? That's what heaven is, eternal bliss. And it only begins when we leave this world. And, and by the way, we're going to be reunited with those that have gone on before us. I know this kind of sounds like a funeral message, don't it? But it's not. It's a truth. I mean, really, it's a truth. My dad has been dead since 1989, and I'm going to see him again. My uncles, my grandmother, and all these that have gone on before me. I can't mention all of them because there's a lot, but I'm going to see him again one day. You know why I know that? Because God tells me that. Boy, isn't that going to be good? You know what? It could happen right now. It could happen tonight before we get out of this church. I'm just glad I'm saved, aren't you? Amen. Boy, what a day that's going to be when we go to heaven to be with Jesus and we're reunited with all of those that have gone on before. I can almost see them waiting on us over there and, and just wanting to show us around heaven. They've been there for a while, you know, and they know all about it. And they, they just want to take us around and show us everything there is. And, and, and Boy. Reunited with all of those that have gone on before us. And by the way, guess what? We'll never have to be parted again. We'll be there forevermore. For us that are saved, the return of Jesus Christ offers nothing less than joys that are going to last for eternity. But lastly tonight... The horror that all those that are left behind will experience. I don't know if you read the book of Revelation. You ought to. You ought to read it quite often. 
But we did a study in it a couple of times since I've been at this church, and I've enjoyed every time that I've preached in it. And, but there's things in there that people ought to know. In Revelation chapter 6, it talks there about the seven seals. In Revelation 8, it talks about seven trumpets. In Revelation 15, it talks about seven vials. And what that's talking about is all the horrible things that's going to happen to people. You see, when we're gone, it's not just the agony of us being gone. That's going to be agony. When mamas get up in the morning and go to the crib and the baby's gone. The horror is what God's going to send to this earth for those that do not know Jesus Christ. I mean, folks, I, I don't know about you, but when you read about all these seals and trumpets and vows, I can only imagine the horror of those people that's going to be here and what they're going to experience. I, I, I don't even want to imagine what it is. Husbands, that their wives are gone, they're panicked, and their family's gone, their children's gone, and they're, they're panicked. There's no words that I could even get together from this pulpit tonight that is sufficient enough to tell you how horrible it's going to be and the chaos it's going to be on this earth hours after Jesus comes to get his people. But it's going to happen. If you think of the worst thing that's ever happened to you, and folks, you know what? Like I said Sunday, you know there are those things in life that happen to you that you never, if you live with your right mind, you'll never forget them because they were horrible. Right? You'll never forget them. Well, you take that and add about 50 million to it. Now that's what those people will go through. The horror and pain and agony and the seclusion of, of the Holy Spirit. I mean, they'll be in such a mess. And the old devil has us so blinded. And has this old world so blinded, they think they're going to live forever. And the reason being is because a lot of times preachers in the pulpits don't preach and tell them these things. I believe we need a revival of preachers preaching the truth, folks. I believe Christians ought to pray for preachers to preach the truth because, folks, we, people need to know. You see, the old devil has made it to where, you know, most churches won't preach, won't teach like I'm doing tonight because it may offend somebody. Listen, folks, I'd rather offend them now than them to be left. Amen. And we've got to tell them. We've got to tell them. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. When Jesus comes. And folks, we are there. Amen. We're there. Let's bow our heads tonight. Father, we love you. We thank you. We lift you up and magnify you. You're worthy of our praise. Thank you for the message tonight. Thank you for the teaching of the end times and what's going to happen. And, but Father, help this to be part of our heart. That tonight, Father, that we know that you're coming. We know you love us.